Hi, I'm Adam Haynes, an elder at Beth Tikkun Messianic Fellowship. Thank you for joining me to discuss the core principle, the oneness of God. If you have not listened to the video introducing the core principles, please listen to that first, and I'll see you again in a little bit. As mentioned in the introductory video, I will not be having an exhaustive conversation about each core principle. Rather, I will be trying to help you get your independent study started by taking a few minutes to string together a few pearls. First, grab your copy and let's read the core principle. We worship and serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is one and the only true God. He is the eternal living God, creator and sovereign of everything, and He alone is to be feared. We are commanded to love our God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our resources. For this one, I want to focus on that first line. We worship and serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You will see Acts 3.13 in your required reading. Here, Peter refers to God as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers. This title appears about 11 times in Torah. Why did Peter choose this one? We can compare this choice of title to El Elyon, Lord Most High, which appears roughly 28 times in the Hebrew Scriptures or Adonai Zevaot, God of Hosts, which appears over 280 times. Or we could compare it against El Shaddai, Nourishing Lord, or Adonai Rapha, Healing God, which appear less frequently, but they are fitting titles following a healing. Or perhaps in his frustration over the situation, Peter could have referenced Deuteronomy 4.23, which says, For the Lord your God, is a consuming fire, a jealous God. Instead, he went with the description God chooses in Exodus 3.6, also mentioned in your required reading. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. This is because this is God's relational title. God's other titles are an expression of his character. While reflected in his actions, these titles do not come from his choices, but from his essence. When God declares, Eye, Esher, Eye, I am that I am, he is making a statement that what he does emerges from who he is. But in the next utterance, he says something profound. This is what you shall say to the sons of Israel. Adonai, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is the name for all generations to call upon me. This title is unique among all the others because this is a title that would not exist if not for us. It is a title that began with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and it has been carried through the generations. Consider another passage from your required reading, Isaiah chapter 45, verses 5 and 7. I am Adonai, and there is no one else. There is no God except me. I will arm you though you have not known me, so that people may know from the rising to the setting of the sun that there is no one besides me. I am Adonai, there is no one else, the one forming light, creating darkness, causing well-being, and creating disaster. I am Adonai, who does all these things. Here, God emphasizes his uniqueness, his sovereignty. However, he does not emphasize it in a manner that excludes his relational title. Rather, a little further down, in verse 22, he emphasizes the potential for relationship, 
Turn to me and be saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none other. One of the things we have chosen to emphasize in our core principle, the oneness of God, is that we have not innovated a new God. Rather, we participate in a fellowship stretching back through the centuries. Thank you for taking a couple minutes out of your day to listen to this quick video. Hopefully it encourages you in your studies. As mentioned in the introduction video, please don't hesitate to send your questions along to me. You'll find my email in the first page of your manual.